Okay, y'all, I'm not trying to alarm you, but it looks like something is going down because this is the Red Sea in between Sudan and Saudi Arabia, and there is a whole bunch of ships on that Red Sea. So what is going on, you guys, right? Not to mention, this just happened today. 10,000 U.S. Army troops were deployed into Saudi Arabia airspace. What is going on? What is the United States preparing for? What are we not being told? I mean, we hear talks of war, but um, how come the president hasn't come on television and said, you know, we have deployed 10,000 U.S. soldiers to Saudi Arabia? What is going on? And don't forget, you guys, we are literally in an election year. So there's a lot of things up in the air right now. A lot of things, including World War Three. You know, whenever there's an election year, they always want to pull some type of stunt on us and keep try to pe try to put people in fear. But you already know what this is. This is a spiritual war. This is literally a spiritual war. I don't know what they're getting ready for. But yeah, we're keeping keeping you guys in the loop and letting you guys know what's going on because um, uh, the media is not telling us nothing about this. They're, they're doing this at night right? they're being secretive about this why are you not telling the country what's going on with everybody else that's part of the country it's weird y'all it's getting weird all right all right so again this video is for entertainment and educational purposes only i am only raising aware shalom come on light now yahweh by hashem yahweh shot by hashem kwankadash our praises be to the Most High, Yahweh, in the name of His Son and our Lord and Savior, Yahweh Shai. Much respect and honor to the brothers that are doing the work in truth and sincerity, risking their lives and freedom to do so, pushing this gospel throughout the four corners of the earth. Salutations to the hopeful elect that are scattered abroad. Double honor and respect to the apostles and elders of Great Millstone. Coming back at you with another lesson. The world does not understand Bible prophecy. And Jake is through. He keeps saying, I don't know what's going on. Why they're not telling us about these things. Yahweh Shai told us about these things. The spirit of the book, the Holy Bible. If... Before I get started, I want to read this copyright disclaimer, the Fair Use Act of 1976. This video is just for educational and instructional purposes only. <laughs> educational and instructional purposes only. And we're only exercising our opinion. It says... Copyright Disclaimer under Section 107 of the Copyright Act of 1976. Allowance is made for fair use for purposes such as criticism, comment, news reporting, teaching, scholarship, education, and research. Fair use is permitted by the copyright statute. <clears throat> So, this is only fair use, educational comments, criticism, and teaching for scholarship. So, I want to go here to Bible prophecy. Let's go to the book of Jeremiah, not Jeremiah, the book of Joel 2 and 20. <clears throat> Let's go up to verse 19. Yea, the Lord will answer and say unto his people, Behold, I send you corn and wine and oil, and ye shall be satisfied therewith, and I will no more make you a reproach among the heathen. So we're entering into a very pivotal time frame where the kingdom is at hand, the kingdom is at stake. And this is one of the things that motivates us to be diligent to make our calling and election sure. So the promises are getting ready to be executed here on earth, subduing the nations under all Israel. 
Israel becoming a united nation empire again, northern and southern kingdom, all 12 nations, which are all 12 tribes. So this is a very exciting time we're living in right now. Joel 2 and 19 again. Yea, the Lord will answer and say unto his people, Behold, I will send you corn and wine and oil, and ye shall be satisfied therewith. And I will no more make you a reproach among the heathen. But I will remove far off from you the northern army and will drive him into a land barren and desolate with his face toward the east sea and his hinder part toward the utmost sea the utmost sea let's go ahead and go to a map real quick <clears throat> so this is saudi arabia where these troops are many troops are deploying to let's say it like that many troops are deploying to saudi arabia that died that barren and desolate dry land <laughs> been sick these last couple of days or so. So the hindermost part, the Red Sea here, as we can see on the map, and then to the east of that, you have the Persian Gulf. <clears throat> this area here, the mid to upper portion of Saudi Arabia is the Levant, very fertile and rich land <clears throat> let's go and click on that real quick that touches the mediterranean sea uh, many seaports there so this is what facilitates merchant trade so the israelites are going to own all these territories and the surrounding lands notice where this is at it has Four major water points for sea trade, <clears throat> merchant trade, and controlling the resources of the world. About 80% of the oil transports go through this area, specifically utilizing the Suez Canal here. And they want to open up another another waterway open this area up through the red sea this little waterway here and they want to open that up and gain access to the mediterranean sea that's what the global elite want to do so then ultimately the plan or the end state is to control this entire region but these areas are promised to the israelites and this red line really would go further down into the Persian Gulf area as well to control that water access point. <clears throat> so these lands were promised to the Israelites. So that's what it's talking about here. When we go to Joel chapter 2, we'll go back to it. Joel 2 and 20. But I will remove far off from you the northern army the North American military is the daughter Babylon, the land of the North America. But I will remove far off from you the northern army and will drive him into a land barren and desolate, Saudi Arabia, <clears throat> with his face toward the East Sea, the Persian Gulf, and his hinder part toward the utmost sea, the Red Sea, and his stink shall come up, and his ill savor shall come up, because he have gone, because he have done great things. So this mobilization is occurring right now. <clears throat> Fear not, O land, be glad and rejoice, for the Lord will do great things. <clears throat> and we know when we read Joel chapter 3, he is mustering the host of the battle. And these nations, these armies are being gathered around the valley of Yahweh Shaphat. 
which is that the modern day landmass of Israel, but collectively the so called Middle East area. But we know it's not the Middle East, that's a made up name. So these troop deployments are helping to fulfill Bible prophecy. Approximately 45,000 troops in this region. So is the Bible lying in Joel 2 and 20? Absolutely not. 13,500 approximately in Kuwait, 9,000 in Bahrain, 8,000 in Qatar, the United Arab Emirates, 3,500, Oman, 300, Saudi Arabia, that number has increased. So these, this is, these are old numbers. Jordan, approximately 3,000, Syria, 900, Turkey, approximately 1,900, Iraq, approximately 3,000. And then here in Israel, there's been at least a few thousand. That number may be upwards of 5,000 now. So these are old figures. So the Bible is once again spot on. And this is a very enriched area full of oil and resources, many natural water access points. The Israelites are going to control this land, this territory, and it's going to become a dominant global power that's going to rule over all the nations on the earth. Let's go to Genesis 15. <coughs> Look at Genesis chapter 15. Let's go to verse 18. I'm going to get right to the point. In the same day, the Lord made a covenant with Abram, saying, Unto thy seed have I given this land from the river of Egypt unto the great river, the river Euphrates. So the seed of Israel is promised these lands. That's it. the so-called greater Israel or the plan of the wicked global elite international bankers. So that, that Euphrates in right here in Iraq. This is not a good map where it's not showing it real well. But this red line should really go a little further to the right and then it should extend further down into the Red Sea, covering the Tigris and the Euphrates and extending down to the Red Sea, a little further, going down further towards the southeast. <clears throat> but that Euphrates and the Tigris is modern day Iraq. There's a reason many of these US troops are stationed there. <clears throat> the military arm of the international global elite is the daughter of Babylon, America, the hammer of the earth. See this? Look at this. It says troops and contractors in the Middle East, so-called. Right now, the current footprint, 45,500. So this is promised to the nation of Israel, the seed of of the promise, the chosen seed. <clears throat> Let's go here to Deuteronomy 11. The book of Deuteronomy chapter 11. <clears throat> Let's go to verse 18. Deuteronomy 11 and 17. And when the Lord's wrath be kindled against you, and he shut up the heaven, and there be no rain, and that the land yield not her fruit, and that she perish quickly from off the good land which the Lord giveth you. So the Israelites are under the, con the contract, the covenant. This is why we were taught that the law, statutes, and commandments are done away with. 
Deuteronomy 11 and 18. Therefore shall ye lay up these my words in your heart and in your soul and bind them for a sign upon your hand that they may be as frontlets between your eyes. Meditating on the will of our husband, our heavenly father, through Yahweh Shai, the bridegroom, day in and day out. Deuteronomy 11 and 19. And ye shall teach them your children, speaking of them when thou sittest in thine house, and when thou walkest by the way, when thou layest down, and when thou risest up. And thou shalt write them upon the doorposts of thine house and upon thy gates. So right now, the doorposts of our mind is where this information is being deeply seeded into. Like fertile soil. That's what's happening right now in the minds of the elect. Verse 21 that your days may be multiplied in the days of your children in the land which the Lord swear unto your fathers to give them as the days of heaven upon the earth. So his word does not fade away. This is what sets up the kingdom of heaven for the Israelites. It starts with the heavenly doctrine the manna from the fourth dimension, the third heaven. This is what creates rulers of the Israelites, kings and priests on the earth. Deuteronomy 11 and 22. For if ye shall diligently keep all these commandments, which I command you to do them, to love the Lord your God, to walk in all his ways and to cleave unto him. Then will the Lord drive out all these nations from before you, and ye shall possess greater nations and mightier than yourselves. So the wicked global elite, they're trying to come up another way. They want to go through the back door because they're not given the promises. The covenant is not made with them, the marriage vows, the marriage contract. So these nations are going to be judged that are gathering around in the valley of Yahweh Shaphat, which means Yahweh's judgment or decision. So these fertile and rich, uh, resource and rich lands are going to be given to the promised seed, the Israelites. And the troops from these nations are being gathered to that region just for their judgment when we read Joel chapter 3. Let's go to Deuteronomy 11 and 24. Every place whereon the soles of your feet shall tread shall be yours from the wilderness in Lebanon, from the river, from the river Euphrates, even unto the uttermost See, shall your coast be. So we looked at all this. <laughs> See, we looked at all this. This region is going to be controlled by the kings and priests of, oh, after the order of Melchizedek, Malak Tazadak in Hebrew, after the king of righteousness. <clears throat> like I said, this line should really even cover the Persian Gulf as well. And this northern area of Saudi Arabia is the Levant, a very fertile area. That wicked woman said this is just all desert, and just straight desert, that's it. No, that's not true. I don't think she ever looks at a map. And this is also an oil-rich region as well. It's resource-heavy. But the bottom line is, it will set up control of over 80% of the merchandise that's going to be trafficked into this area. <clears throat> Let's go here to, uh, I want to get this first. <clears throat> Let's go to 
Um, I think it's Isaiah 60. Yeah, I think it's Isaiah 60. See? Isaiah 60 and 16. <clears throat> Let's go up. The book of Isaiah chapter 60. See that Lebanon is also Libanus. That's that region, the modern day country of Lebanon. Isaiah 60 and 13. The glory of Lebanon shall come unto thee. The fir trees, the pine tree, and the box together to beautify the place of my sanctuary. And I will make the place of my feet glorious. So his shoe is going to be cast out in this area, if you will. Edom is going to be trodden down underfoot. They're controlling this region right now. The dukes or the royal house of Edom. Tabernacles of Edom or the dukes of Edom. Is controlling this region right now. The international bankers. Meyer M. Shelbauer said, give me control of a nation's money. I care less who makes its laws. So they're financing both sides of the conflicts in this region. We got to remember, to destabilize a region generates wealth. You got to go in and do what? Set up contractors, reconstruction teams, rebuilding teams. You see, carpent carpenters, masons, electricians, IT experts, internet, water purification teams, you name it. We can, we can be here for three hours. <clears throat> so it creates money out of chaos. <clears throat> but under the Israelites, under Yahweh Shai, King David, the kingdom is going to be set up under a righteous government. See, all this merchandise is going to be coming in to the royal house of David. <coughs> all their wealth. First thing should come to mind is what happened under King David. The glory of Lebanon shall come unto thee, the fir tree, the pine tree, and the box together to beautify the place of my sanctuary. And I will make the place of my feet glorious. The sons also of them that afflicted thee shall come bending unto thee. And all they that despise thee shall bow themselves down at the soles of thy feet. And they shall call thee the city of the Lord, the Zion of the Holy One of Israel. These are the people of the Lord, the chosen ones. The people of his covenant, the blessed seed, whereas thou hast been forsaken and hated, so that no man went through thee, I will make thee an eternal excellency, a joy of many generations. So the Israelites are going to be looked upon as the stars on the earth, the celebrities, if you will. These are the stars of heaven, the first lights created after Yahweh and are going to be recognized as that. The illuminated ones are the bearers or carriers of the light. So this is going to be established on the earth. The true illuminated ones or Illuminati. Let's go to verse 16. Thou shalt... Thou shalt also suck the milk of the Gentiles, and shalt suck the breasts of kings. And thou shalt know that I, the Lord, am thy Savior, and thy Redeemer, the Mighty One of Jacob. Beautiful. So all their resources, all their goodies, if you will, is going to be dedicated towards nourishing the Lord's chosen. The Most High has favorites. Deal with it. Many people want to say, well, now the Bible is it's not a, tr a true book. <clears throat> he has an elect. For brass, I will bring gold. And for iron, I will bring silver. And for wood, brass. And for stones, iron. 
I will also make the officers peace and thine exactors righteousness. I will make your officers peace and thine exactors righteousness. So remember, King David dedicated the gold and silver to the Lord. So these resources are being translated to the Lord's royal house of nobility. See, let's go back in time. When you look at this region under the Davidic dynasty, King David conquered these um, nations in this region. What has been will be again. And there was no new thing under the sun. See, let's look at let's look at the map again real quick. Excuse me, I've been sick these last few days. <clears throat> look at this. Look, there's Syria. The Assyrians became David's servants. Now in this land here, when you look at the modern day area of Jordan, that Petra region, Edom which was southeast of Judah. And the Edomites became David's servants. See that? Then you got some Hamites over here to the west. The Philistines. So these nations are going to be subdued again. <clears throat> See, let's close out with that. We'll close out. And Jake don't have a clue in the video on what's going on because he's not of the elect. Let's go to David's kingdom. Strengthen. Remember the Lord says he will rebuild the tabernacle of David as in the days of old. That's the leadership hierarchy and structure, the chain of command being reestablished. First Chronicles 18 and 1. Now, after this, it came to pass that David smote the Philistines and subdued them and took Gath and her towns out of the hand of the Philistines. Many of these Palestinians are Hamitic in that region today of modern day Israel. So they're going to be subdued, if not killed. There's going to be a residue of them salvage to go into captivity. Most of them are going to be wiped out from the destruction to come. So the Philistines or the modern day Palestinians. Now there's some of them calling themselves Philistines that are descendants of Ishmael or so-called Arab, which means mixed. You see how the Bible repeats itself. This is absolutely amazing. <clears throat> First Chronicles 18 and 1. Now after this, I came. Now after this, it came to pass that David smote the Philistines and subdued them and took Gath and her towns out of the hand of the Philistines. And he smote Moab and the Moabites became David's servants and brought gifts. See, everything's going to be consecrated unto the Lord's people. The Moabites have a vested interest in that area as it is this day. The so-called Chinese, particularly Africa. And they have contractors in Northern Africa and throughout the so-called Middle East. See, so the same key players the same major actors are back. And David smote Hadadezar, king of Zabal, unto Hamath, as he went to establish his dominion by the river Euphrates. You can't make this up. That's the modern day area of Iraq. By the river Euphrates. See? can't make this up. So this whole region is going to be controlled by the Israelites, the governmental structure of the tabernacle of David. The Euphrates right here. 
these two major rivers running down southeast of Iraq, the Tigris on the left and the Euphrates on the right. If I'm not mistaken, because it's not a good map, but I'm going off old maps that I've looked at. <clears throat> Let's read that again. First Chronicles 18 and 3. And David smote Hadadezer, king of Zabah, unto Hamath, as he went to establish his dominion by the river Euphrates. And David took from him a thousand chariots and seven thousand horsemen and twenty thousand footmen. David also hugged all the chariot horses, but reserved of them a hundred chariots. And when the Syrians of Damascus came to help Hadadezer, king of Zabah, David slew of the Assyrians two and twenty thousand men. Same region, same players back again today. There's Syria. They're going to be taken down and subdued. All the way to the Euphrates, Iraq. Which Shinar is in Iraq. Shinar, which was a part of that, that uh, ancient Babylonian empire. <coughs> so the fighting is going to take place again here. And the Lord is going to raise up the battle axe of the house of David. What's interesting, many of us veterans fought in this area. Like Iraq. And been deployed to these regions. But one of the things that stands out to me is the cradle of civil the cradle of civilization where everything started right there in Palestine and then branching out to well started right there in the Gaza Strip, the Palestine region, and then branching out into Israel, where everything started, it's going to end here. And Yahweh Shai is going to set up his nobles. Very interesting to me. So these Assyrians, ancient Assyrians, now they're called Syrians. That whole area and the people are going to be subdued. And the residue of the heathen in the surrounding areas. Let's read that again. First Chronicles 18 and 5. And when the Syrians of Damascus came to help Hadadezer, king of Zabah, David slew of the Assyrians two and twenty thousand men. Then David put garrisons in Syria, Damascus, and the Syrians became David's servants and brought gifts. Thus the Lord preserved David whithersoever he went. So the saints of the Most High shall take the kingdom pursuant to Daniel chapter 7. So we're seeing this whole storyline begin, begin to cycle back around. Instant replay. So the, the key is focusing on Bible prophecy in order to understand and maintain peace of mind or mental stability. The Bible says wisdom and knowledge shall be the stability of thy time, and the fear of the Lord is his treasure. So we're just sitting back and trying to be as diligent as we can to make our calling and election sure, but we're not in panic mode. No need to panic. We have everything under control through the spirit and power of Yahweh Bahashem, Yahweh Shai. Hopefully, this lesson has been edifying. Our praises be to Yahweh Bahashem, Yahweh Shai. Bahashem, Rakwakadash, Barakatham. See you on the next lesson, Lord willing. Kwam Yasharala, Nabad Babal. We got next, Lord willing. 
Morocco Thumb. Shalom.